I want you to close your eyes. Close them for a second. Imagine being and living in Labalji, Nigeria, experiencing many challenges and situations and limitations. Being a 26 year old individual, providing for your family, working 11 hours a day in extreme heat. This is Awal Muhammad's reality. He dreams of owning his own auto repair shop that will not only sustain his family, but also transform his community around him. However, Mr. Muhammad lacks a business expertise that will allow him to successfully run a long-term business. But with our team and your help, we will help transform not only his business, but the lives around him. It is really nice to meet you again. My name is Frida Aragon. Hi, I'm Sienna Beatrice. I'm Natalie Puglisi. I'm Jeremy Land. I'm Darren Culver. I'm Renit Dar. Mr. Muhammad faces a variety of limitations. Some of these include his location. At the moment, he is an apprentice and does not own his own business. The second limitation is the lack of resources and tools. So this um, challenges him so he can't work to the best of his abilities. And lastly, the lack of financial literacy because he's never owned a business for himself. So he's not fully educated on that yet. As a team, we were given $3,000 as a budget. With this money, we are going to be purchasing new tools and equipment. Our financial analysis and financial tracking template will allow Mr. Muhammad to track all of the income and expenses for his business. The implementation plan will guide Mr. Muhammad through the steps of building his business, and the monitoring and evaluation plan will require our project coordinator to check in weekly and make sure the business is on track. So for the target market, I'll be giving a brief overview on what the ideal customer and, and how Awal uh, differentiates himself from the other competition in the area. So first, uh, what does an ideal customer look like? Well, it's someone who's friendly, uh, ready to learn, open, and uh, just an overall good person because Awal differentiates himself from the uh, one other competition uh, auto repair shop in his area uh, by really uh, emphasizing his customer satisfaction. He really uh, values that almost over everything else. Um, and another way he can differentiate himself from competition is uh, uh, his prices being fixed. There's a lot of fluctuation in the Naira currency, as a lot of the other groups have already stated. And so Awa likes to be fair to his customers by keeping the prices the same, no matter how high or low the market is at that given day. So Bauchi is located in the northeastern zone of Nigeria and has a population of nearly 700,000 people. And out of these 700,000 people, 75% of them rely on transportation. And um, as the city continues to grow economically, the demand for reliable transportation will grow as well. So in this context, it is very important that there's a dependable auto repair shop that people can go to if something were to happen to their vehicle. So Awal's auto shop is one of two repair shops in uh, his area. So investing would be a strategic opportunity and it would uh, yield benefit to Awal and the people of um, Bauchi. I'll talk about a few contributions that we will be providing Mr. Muhammad to better enhance his work ethic. So the first is a three-ton hydraulic jack. This is a tool that is used to elevate the car when working underneath it. And by providing this to Mr. Muhammad, he will have an easier and more safe way of working underneath cars. Second is location. He's gonna be located in the middle of a town. So he will have a better stable customer base. Second is the services. Third is the services that he provides the engine service, replacing bearing, and wheel general service. Lastly, customer service is a huge factor for Mr. Muhammad, and he has impeccable customer satisfaction skills. He already has 12 returning customers and hopes to grow this number as he grows his business. So my team has introduced his business idea, his infrastructure, materials, and his potential in this emerging market in Nigeria very well. But we must also consider his lack of financial literacy as well as his 
restricted internet access. And for this reason, we've compiled a manual financial tracking system in which he tallies the number of service repairs for each type of service daily for the entire week and uses these costs, adds them up to get the total revenue. Then he goes and tracks his expenses, which include rent and transportation, et cetera, adds the cost to find the total expense at the end. And then he subtracts his total revenue with his total expenses to get his total net profit. And we've planned for him to save 20% of that total net profit for emergency purposes or when business is down while using the other 80% for his own personal use and advancing his business. Now let's talk about the advantages. Mr. Muhammad has um, many advantages with starting his business. The first, which is location. M Mr. Muhammad was looking at a location on Murtala Muhammad Way, which is a very busy, safe, and populated street. On this street is also hotels, government offices, and markets. The second advantage is experience. Mr. Muhammad has over uh, has seven years of experience working as an apprentice. He's very skilled in Toyotas, Hyundai, and Hondas, and he already has 12 loyal customers. The third advantage is technology. With providing him with new tools will come advanced technology. This will allow Mr. Muhammad to work more efficiently and productively, and the financial tracking system will allow him to be more organized and uh, uh, other than different shops in the area. With our infrastructure, we've ensured that Mr. Muhammad will have a profitable business that works for the long term. He'll get his revenue from his services, as well as an alternative source course in which he plans to be an auto supplier, which is why he's buying extra inventory parts in order to stock up whenever he wants to supply them. And ultimately, there's lots of value provided. He will make sure with his, uh, with his consistent pricing that he has efficient and quick engine repairs, uh, service repairs. He gets more customers in the process, greater revenue, and can use that to help expand his business. He has a vision to educate his community out of poverty, and this will help him do exactly that. And that's why for his implementation, he'll first buy his materials, set up his shop, service and finance, we'll check in with him, and then it's up to him to continue profiteering. So here you could see how we plan to use the proposed budget. And on the bottom right of your screen, you'd see the total amount. And as you could probably tell, this is not the full amount of the budget. So the rest would go to uh, business expenses that he may have. So we just wanted to highlight some of the more important investments we feel like that we're making with this grant. So first of all, we have the kiosk, and this is very important because it focuses on organization and in a business that he works in, Stuff can get very messy and working with all these parts can get very out of hand. So having everything in one place where it's easy to access would be very beneficial for his business. Next, we have the expenses, which would include rent and uh, transportation. So for rent, he has to pay rent on his land and so it can keep the business flowing. And then for transportation, he has to pay for transportation to get supplies to him and then, and then back and forth, all that stuff. And my personal favorite is the toolbox. So with the toolbox, it's portable. You have a whole lot of tools in there that you can use and it makes his life a lot easier. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed Awal's story and hope that he can get his business uh, kick-started with the grant money if we were to receive it. If you have any questions, you can contact us here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Umar. Uh, and good work, team, in representing uh, your client. Uh, love the use of the word limitations instead of problem. Two thumbs up. Um, in, again, as with the previous pre uh, presenter, and I, instead of saying lack of financial literacy, I, I would accentuate the positive and say, you know, we 
use the word limited already, but he, he must be doing something right to have gotten as far as he has. So rather than portraying the poor guy is completely lacking, you know, we'll just say very limited or something like that. And we'll, let's accentuate the positive. There was a reference very early on to, we are going to purchase the equipment, just a reminder as, you know, he's, he's going, the entrepreneur, the social entrepreneur will be doing, making all decisions, everything's in his hands. So he will be the decision maker. He will be making the purchases. It's not within the scope for services for the advisory folks to be doing anything. You always help the client do. Um, given the fact that there is uh, inflation risk and currency risk, uh, foreign exchange risk, um, I'd just be curious at some stage, I'm not asking for it right now, but I, I it's praiseworthy. I mean, I can see the objective for it, but he's even if he were 10 times the size or a hundred times the size, uh, his business, it would be, it's not sustainable for him to absorb that. And I don't know how, uh, that, you know, he'd be able to internalize those costs. Um, just remember in general, when presenting always to continue to stand up straight, try to avoid like crossing feet and legs and things like that. And kind of squirming and moving around a little bit, um, given his very limited financial literacy, how will the entrepreneur, social entrepreneur, use his very, the very good financial tracking system that you laid out? Is this going to be a matter of actually training him to be able to do it? Or early on, at least, will there need to be, say, one hour a month of a bookkeeper as an expense? Um, and then, um, or will this be, in the alternative, something leadership initiatives would provide direct assistance from uh, with in addition to the grant funding and at the end there was a reference to or near the end a reference to being an auto supplier and the first thing uh, my ears perked up because it sounded like there was an implication that he was going to be selling cars but then it was followed up with selling parts so i was a little bit confused about that reference to being a maybe it was just a missing word auto parts supplier but it was a fine effort you represented your client very well um you know and wish him the best and uh, congratulations to all of you thank you um i enjoyed your presentation i think you guys did great although you left me with my eyes closed yeah <laughs> So I didn't get to open my eyes until the second person started speaking and I realized maybe I should open my eyes. So remember to ask your audience to open their eyes if they do shut their eyes. <laughs> uh, but it's a good way to get into the presentation. I think you guys did great. Uh, I'll just add one piece and maybe not even add, just highlight again. I think uh, the one piece that I noted with the, those fixed prices kept bothering me because I know it was mentioned last time also. And I think that's one thing that you definitely want to it's something he can't, it's he just it's just not feasible for him to keep absorbing. I understand the the you know wanting to keep that fixed price, but I can tell you, uh just two months ago, the rate of exchange was about I think four officially it was four hundred and forty or something, but now as of today, it's eight hundred and forty four. That's double the amount per dollar. So you can imagine, there is no way he can sustain that. And even if he wants to absorb it, it's okay as a business. You you can still increase it and come a little bit under the what others are charging, and still because the the, the market is going to expect him to raise the cost. They know the cost of everything is going up. So it's it's a it's a huge double. You know, it's 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 crazy because and that's just it's not just the market itself. It's policy around foreign exchange also and the government removing sort of this other barrier. So there's a whole thing behind it, but for a business to have to absorb that instantly, that's, he can't, he just can't do it, right? Because he's going to have to buy parts. He's going to have to buy food, <laughs> right? Uh, so all of that costs. So I think it's important for a business owner to realize as much as it's honorable to want to keep the prices to maintain your customers, your customers are also going to expect you know, you to make some shift because they know everything else around them is going up, right? So uh, something to keep in mind. But other than that, you guys are great. It sounds like you understand your business owner's needs and you presented, you know, you presented it here. Uh, and finally, actually, uh, going back to what my colleague said there, always presented as a, um, this is his 
his uh, this is him trying to do this, like buying buying the equipment, right? So you're not buying it for him. And I think uh, going back to the others in the group also, because I did make a note somewhere here, you know, um, it's important that uh, we understand that this is him taking the initiative to do this and not, you know, you buying X, Y, Z for him, right? So what is he going to do? How is he going to manage this business even after you're gone? Otherwise, you guys did wonderful. Thank you. No, no, I know a lot of what we're saying here today can seem like, you know, it's hard, you know, but you guys put a lot of hard work into this. You spent a whole week, you know, doing this work. But, you know, I want you to know that this, none of what we're saying here takes away from any of the hard work that you guys put into, you know, your presentations, put into the effort, you know, working with the business partner, if anything, it actually, you know, highlights one or two things here and there that, you know, you can take back as you finalize, you know, some of this and feedback that you can give your business partners as well, because this is, this is why you're here. So, you know, I want you to celebrate every, every experience that you're getting here today. Yeah, and I appreciate your advice and we'll take it as a learning experience. Um, just to answer your question about how exactly he's going to track all his financial expenses and everything. Um, can you go to the slide? Yeah, so basically we're letting him like tally the number of services he's actually going to give, uh, provide per day and then we're just multiplying the cost per service and then just adding it up. So he's going to like manually enter everything to be able to do it. Right. But you started out by saying he had a lack of financial literacy. Uh, I think he probably doesn't lack it. He's probably limited, like I said. Yeah. But um, I was just curious what the expectations were. And with some modest training, I think this, this could be doable. I was just curious about how to get from A to B. That's all. And instructions are also provided in our proposal. So great. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you so much guys for, for making sure that uh, you clarify everything, but uh, this is really an amazing presentation. I love it. I love every part of it and uh, how you guys really connect with our world to understand all his needs. And um, just so you understand that all the observation, all the key points given by the judges is just to make you uh, understand that, okay, so next time if you're moving, doing things like that, these are the things you need to take into consideration. So, uh, and sometimes criticism is actually a good thing because uh, it's, it's actually a point that, uh, you know, opens up uh, another uh, experience or another talent for you to, uh, to take into consideration. So, uh, I totally agree with the with with, with the judges uh, talking about uh, the financial literacy and then the pricing of a thing. So uh, basically, uh, I always tell you guys that ask like the level of their education because uh, if they don't understand how to write, how to do other things, but they just have the skills. Uh, it's it's always a difficult thing for them to just have a guide like a written and for them to go through. But I know leadership initiatives office take that responsibility to make sure that they learn how to put all those things in place. So uh, it, it's really an important thing. Uh, apart from that, uh, you guys have uh, you 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 have a budget, you know, uh, and your budget is really clear. Uh, it's just that you need to elaborate more about. Uh, what actually the business needs is it just like these three tools you mentioned or if you need it more than that so but apart from that you guys have really made a good connection you really provided a lasting solution to the business because tools are always important uh for the business and uh i think you guys have done a great job so i'm really proud of your team for uh, putting such a wonderful presentation and for making sure that your business partner really really receive all the benefits he needed uh, to start up his business so thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you